I said all that to say that it is most important that I share the gospel of the word of God because he is the only way to be saved. I have been following my colleagues at the National Institute of Mental Health. And, you know, God is nowhere to be found in any of their science. And it is not going to be by academia and it is not going to be by um, man's intelligence or wisdom that is going to save our nation's workforce from premature death, disease, poverty, and give you the lifestyle that you deserve and the promises that you deserve. It will only be through faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. My um, colleagues, I notice, have completely done away with saying things like your spirit, everything's zoned into neuropsychiatric or something like that, or psychiatric or neuropsychiatric. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the lane that they're in. But if you know words and the meaning of words and you know psych is a word that means soul. Your soul is not in your brain. So there's certain things that you need to do, like prayer and reading the word of God and doing those things that will actually get you through systemic barriers and land you in the opposite of where people are landing at right now, not doing anything, or following the ways of the system. You're going to do whatever you want to do anyway. You do not have to believe me. You do not have to trust me. Um, many of you do not believe the word of God. So I'm just doing my part. I am just doing what I promised that I would do had I made it through. And not only did I make it through, I went on to create I didn't tell you, I was fired for disability in 2015 from Ronald Reagan UCLA, um, losing my precious vested benefits, um, vested pension, you know, that handsome package that UCLA has. I was a vested employee, lost that behind corporate corruption and my health insurance. And I was left with six months of unemployment assurance and uh, a cashed out 403B and just say, thank God I saved up 10% of my income or else I wouldn't even had that to have supernatural blessings on. But when I thought I lost everything, God showed up and he raised up the nursing platform, which is what you're experiencing right now. And I went on ahead to create books and product lines and a company to help other people do the same if they so desire to reap the great consequences of the Lord and our Savior, Yahuwah Hamashiach, the Christ. So how many of you have heard that saying to let go and let God? I grew up hearing it, let go and let God. But to let go and let God is not actually scriptural. You cannot find that scripture anywhere in the Bible. Let go is found in the book of Exodus. Let go is a command Yahweh gave to Pharaoh through Moses regarding the Israelites, right? So if you know the story, type in the comments. I know the story. I happen to... um think that a lot of people don't know the Bible and don't know um, what who God is and what his love and intentions are for us. So I want you to think of it this way. I want you to think of the story of Yahweh, Pharaoh, Moses, and the Israelites that God is God, right? God is also your mental health. I said earlier that Psych means soul. So God is your soul, right? He He's your soul. He's also your very spirit, your breath, right? And so think of it as your mental health. Think of 
God as your mental health. Pharaoh is your employer because Pharaoh in the Bible represents the government. He represents policy. And then the Israelites are you. Your job in letting go is to follow the truth. You must follow the truth. If the truth of your situation leads you to quit, I have never recommended anyone to quit. I don't know any story in the Bible where God says to quit. Um, he, he actually says for you to dine in the presence of your enemies and um, to face your fears and to not be afraid. A lot of people are quitting. Um, I know that there have been a lot of um, journalistic reports on Black women quitting jobs because they fear Black people, fear positions in the workplace. They fear they don't have belonging. There's a lot of things that are happening in the workplace that are just not structurally biblical that's playing out when it should be. And the reason why it's not is because the mindset is not set on you following the truth and the light and letting go of your feelings and following principle. So your struggle is that you do not know how to follow the truth of God and that you fear and worry about your future when all it takes is for you to look at the story of the Israelites when they did leave Pharaoh. Yes, it was a, you know, <laughs> it was some, some chasing and some splitting of the Red Sea and some protecting and some, a lot of praying and then a lot of idolatry, but the promise, oh, let me not forget, being fed angel's bread, which is probably the most important because there's something unique about food, right? When I was raising my children, being able to feed them was my driving force. It was my driving force to be able to feed them. And everything that I did was based on being able to provide a meal for them, a sustainable, healthy meal for them. So I understand that a lot of people make hasty decisions based on what it is that they're going to eat and what they're not going to eat or be able to provide for their family. But God is not a God that shall lie. You are his child and he will feed you. He knows what you need. He will clothe you. All you have to do is trust and to follow him. And when you're letting go from the workplace, what you're letting go of is your attachment. What you're letting go of is your dependency on your employer. What you're letting go of is idolizing your employer and your paycheck as your God. Because God himself will provide. And when they diagnose you with depression because you are going and entering into an idolatrous system, they're going to label you and they're going to medicate you. Why? 